Hello and welcome to Five of the Week. Five of the Week is a weekly recap show discussing a select assortment of topics about the NCAA on the SBA forums. I am your host once again at Star, and boy have I got some news for you. The process! It's now back underway after some ridiculous rimming by a certain Californian basketballer. College is also almost over for the year and yours truly hasn't gotten lucky searching for a summer job, so you may expect some more stuff coming this summer. Concerning this podcast, we are now in our 12th week and still going strong. Joining the show with me this week are a cryptic Pancake. Hi, I'm a cryptic Pancake. I'm the AD for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And... The special one, the one you've all been waiting for so dearly. Actually, it's not Danger Golding, it's Robotastic. Welcome. Hi, I'm Robotastic Prime, 80 for the Indiana Hoosiers, and also a player for the LA Rail. Not special this time, um, but as always, a star studded lineup uh, of Colorful personalities, but moving on, we have much to cover. We'll start off with some award predictions or revi- re- re- revisiting of our award predictions. Some of the awards are mainly set in stone already because there are only five more games left this season. Uh, the MVP is looking like it's going to Mr. X, as is the Center of the Year award. And the. I called it. It's not a difficult call, but yes, congratulations. For real, <laughs> Robo, along with 95% of everyone else, called it. I believe yep. it was over 70 people. I'm in the majority, boys. Top work. Uh, and uh, the other All-American Positional Awards are pretty much, uh, pretty much set in stone, aside of the Point Guard of the Year conversation, uh, which is a spicy one. We won't be revisiting that. This week, uh, we'll start off with Freshman of the Year Award. Our front runners going into the season were H.J. Darrow, a guard forward for the Indiana Hoosiers. Um, who else was it? Eden Empire, forward for the Duke Blue Devils. And then I believe it was, in terms of front runners, I mean, it was. Javon Williams of the Kentucky Wildcats, but now there are new challengers. Uh, Tuma Jakande, a man you know very well, Pancake, and Othello Hawkins from the Maryland Terrapins, and then Sam Gray of the Wichita State Shockers. Has you guys' opinion changed at all, or do you still hold on to your preseason predictions? Um, yeah, I'm still going to stick with my preseason prediction. Why not? What was your preseason prediction? Too much I mean, I don't think he's going to win it, but I like to believe that he will. Mm. Well, he's certainly upped his talk. Uh, upped his talk. I mean, made good on that expectation. Maybe not. Maybe not actual freshman of the year award. Deser- uh, deserving recipient of the Freshman of the Year award, but still in contention. What about you, Robo? Uh, well, I picked AJ Darrow to win it, and I, f- I still feel he can. I just don't know if his offense is enough for him to get that award, because he hasn't know. really been a focal point of offense so far. All right, so we'll move on to AJ Darrow. In focus, uh, AJ Darrow has been starting s- for the whole season, uh, eight points in 29.3 minutes per game, also five assists and a 1.6 steals per game. So, uh, kind of a playmaking, ball moving, ball handling, shooting guard, which is maybe five some five rebounds as well. Oh yeah, that is my bad. Uh, 5.5, 5.4 rebounds per game. So that's something for Robotastic to concern himself with going into the future, having a creator at the two-guard position. 
what are your thoughts on AJ Darrow more specifically this season? Uh, well, this season has been kind of a weird one for the Hugers. No real star showing up and putting up a lot of points like a lot of the other unca- like uh, other contending teams. So like uh, we're spreading the ball around a lot. Everyone's getting shots in, and uh, unfortunately, AJ Darrow's stats probably aren't looking the best they could look because of that. All right. Well, uh, what about your boy then, Too Much Akande? An actual guard, not a guard slash forward, out of the <clears throat> University of Notre Dame. Yeah, so um, he's really just been a great scorer all season. I mean, he's averaging 17 points. He's at almost six rebounds per game and at four assists. And yeah, so that was a really good stat line that I wasn't really expecting, but... I'm very happy with the production that came out of it then. And yeah, I think he's pretty efficient and he's been carrying a big load on our offense and he's really been one of our primary options the whole year. And I think he's been doing a great job. Yes. Uh, I also think too much Akande has a very bright future ahead of him. Uh, he can only look to improve and get better and better each upcoming week. Uh, my boy in the freshman of the year race is, of course, Eden Empire. Uh, Eden Empire started the season shooting three-pointers. Not a whole lot of three-pointers, but still shooting three-pointers. Uh, after that got settled and moved past, he's moved on to long twos which is a coach's favorite uh i don't know about that to be honest but uh eden empire uh, also started all 77 games 36 minutes per game with 13.8 points per game scored the six rebounds 5.8 rebounds per game and a league leader in steals per game with 2.3 already uh, already at 178 steals i believe in top 10 of all time single seasons that might be wrong maybe it was top three of all freshmen that's that sounds more realistic so eden empire has had my uh prediction and still has my vote but i won't be surprised if it goes to Someone else, it's a tightly contested race. Um, we're also omitting so far Oscar Zebesilen, the UCLA point guard from the discussion. And the biggest <coughs> biggest dark horse in this competition, the Maryland Terrapin Center, Othello Hawkins. Um, a couple of times during this season, I've called Othello Hawkins the best player on the Maryland Terrapins already, even as a freshman. What are your thoughts on Othello Hawkins? He's really been a great player. He's almost certainly going to win the Freshman of the Year award. Um, He's scoring 21 points. Uh, I mean, he's only at around six rebounds also, which ideally you want more out of your big man, but that's something he can work on. And the main thing, in my opinion, he has to work on is reducing his turnovers or being a better net positive on defense because he doesn't really gather any defensive stats and 2.3 turnovers per game is just a little too much. But therefore, he scores the ball very efficiently and 21 points for a freshman is great. Bold statement there, calling Othello the probable freshman of the year award recipient. Uh, What's your thought on this matter, Robo? Who is the probable Freshman of the Year award recipient. Uh, well, you, you gotta love a scoring big man. Uh, Othello has great future on the Terrapins. They just continue to be good, solid every year. Um, let me check out this other prospect though. We're talking about. Oh, do you want to talk about that later? Sam Gray. Yeah. He has 19 19 points, 4.6 rebounds, 2.6 assists, 2.5 turnovers, and yeah, almost one steal. 
He's a, yeah, he's on the Shockers, right? Yep. Yeah, they're not that good. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the I think the freshman of the year is Othello. All right. To be uh... honest, I mean, me and me me and Pancake can hope for our guys to win it, but it's probably gonna be Othello. Yeah, there definitely won't be any vote collusion. Uh, I'm gonna call this right here, right now. Uh, but with that, with those maybe not so bold claims after all, the five of the week committee is calling for Othello Hawkins to be the freshman of the year winner. So, our second award in focus and the second topic is the most improved player award. The Last season it was an odd discussion between uncapping players, draftees, and then just second year players or uh, players in that 100 to 199 TP range. But this season there is only a couple of expected winners, expected contenders. So it's Orlando Villoria the third the guard forward for the Arizona Wildcats and Tega Inaibi forward for the Villanova Wildcats. So Orlando Villoria the third last season he didn't start the whole season and was only the third option behind Junior Jackson and Dante Sarazel. But this season he is basically the main man in charge in the red hot Arizona Wildcats. What are your thoughts on Orlando Villoria the third and his case for the most improved player? Okay, so he's, as you said, he started being a starter rather than coming off the bench. And you couldn't really tell. So his minutes per game, how did they increase? So that's a huge increase, but he's definitely also made an impact in the extra time. Like his points per game... Uh, they went up from 9.5 to 28.4. And his rebounding, he almost increased that by 2. His assists didn't really increase, but that's whatever. Therefore, his steals went up massively. The only thing you can say where he went down is in turnovers, but that's to be expected if you play a lot more. And even though he's scoring more, he's actually scoring more efficiently than he did last season. And he's also shooting way better from the uh, free throw line. And, well, I mean, three went down, but on more volume. So, therefore, you can definitely say he's improved a great deal. Yes, uh, Orlando Villoria III has a very high usage rate of 30 <coughs> flat and has a magnificent true shooting percentage, 59.5. So, a lot of... Uh, it's a high volume scorer with high efficiency. Uh, there should not be much debate for his cause for shooting guard of the year, but uh, the most improved player might come as a a bit of a bonus for him. Our second contender for the most improved player award is, as I said, Tega and Ivy for the Villanova Wildcats. Um, Tega and Ivy is scoring 28 points per game this season with. 2.6 assists and 5.6 rebounds per game and shooting a hugely impressive 37.3% from the three-point line with over six attempts per game. So Tega and Ibe is also a very, very promising prospect, but you both give the edge to Orlando Villoria the third. Or... Yeah, I think uh, the main difference between the two is... Um, Orlando Valoria, his main increase happened due to him getting more playtime. If you look at Tega Naiba, he's actually playing uh, pretty much exactly the same amount of minutes he played last season, but he still scores 10 points more, and he rebounds a bit less than he did last season, but barely any different, and assists also went down. But in every other stat, he went up pretty much, and as I said, 10 points more per game is a huge increase yeah basically 11 points more per game 28 to 17 so i right, guess it's it's also that question of um do you go do you pick an uncapping players 
mest improved or not. Yeah, that was the part I alluded to earlier about last season, because last season there was oh. the whole conversation about Braden Wilson and whatever, uh, who else uncaps there are, but so all right, uh, <clears throat> after a bit of digging, Nemeas Jr., uh, playing power forward for the North Carolina Tar Heels this season, deserves a mention. Uh, 15.5 points per game in his sophomore season, 6.1 rebounds, uh, 1.4 blocks as well. So he's improving all across the board and is a draft prospect for the season 40 draft, I believe. So with those guys in the bag, uh, the five of the week committee has gathered and we're calling Orlando Villoria the third our most improved player this season in the NCAA. For defensive player of the year there's a bit of a competition but it seems to be in favor of either two players Oplon Pararexis of the Arizona Wildcats or then Plagis the wise center for the Indiana Hoosiers. What's your opinion on this matter Robo? JJ Hawkwood's pretty good. Not good enough, I fear. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Plagueis the Wise. It he uh from the start, I think he pretty much went all in blocking and stealing and stuff. So he's built for defense. Yeah, he's averaging one point five steals and three blocks per game, which is really a great stat line and then in addition to that uh the hoosiers have one of the best defenses in the league so that shows that he doesn't just put up empty stats but the way he plays even if it's not a steal or a block it'll turn into a stop then and yeah i think just the fact that the team defense itself is also good that's really going to help his stock yeah, he has a 93.2 defensive efficiency. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, I think it's a bit better than Duke Blue Devils of last season. I believe it was something like 95.6 for Kosma Vadimovic and Jake Bamba. So, Plagi is the wise, uh, forms the front court of the Hoosiers with Sen Morimoto who is a capable defender in his own right but concerning Oplon Pararexis he's basically the handyman on defense for the Arizona Wildcats 2.7 blocks per game to his name and the Arizona Wildcats I'll just look this up right now yes second in the league in defensive rating 97.1 points given per 100 possessions so <clears throat> the question is then um, if these two teams were to meet i don't know if this is already impossible regarding the playoff brackets but uh, oh we're playing one more game with the oh Zona. so in yes yes all right so that might give us some last game of the season too yeah that might give us some uh, confidence either way uh, but uh, right now if you'd have to call it uh, which would it be Oplon Pararexis or Plagi is the wise um well Hoplon just looking at his stats now he has 0.2 less blocks uh half as many steals but he also has more rebounds and his team's been winning more so it depends how much you attribute his success to the team's success. 59 wins. But he shares the front court with his brother Eporos Pararexis, who is an all out offensive beast who gives basically no help on defense. So <laughs> compare that to Plagis the Wise, who, as mentioned, has the. Only the... defense. Yeah. You, the... Opposite of me. And he also has the help of Sen Morimoto to make his job easier defending the inside. So uh, I think there's a valid valid cause for calling Oplon Pararexis the mm -hmm. 
defensive player of the year because he's doing it basically on his own on the inside and Arizona Wildcats are doing far more superior to Indiana Hoosiers record-wise this regular season. What do you think, Pancake? Yeah, I mean, he's also a great player. Um, As a whole, he's putting up similar stats to, uh, what, Plagius the Wise. But I still, I'd give the nod to Plagius the Wise just due to the fact that as a team they play better defense and that is in large part due to him. Yes, and I believe if I'm not mistaken Plague is the wise just recently broke the single sec- sin- single season record for blocks in a season for a player in the National Collegiate Athletics Association. So that's yeah, also actually. Yeah, I think it was just the sim that concluded mm-hmm. just now. Uh oh. Jogan mentioned it somewhere, but I don't know if it was career blocks. I don't think it was career blocks, but it might be. Either or, uh, career blocks is even even bigger of an accomplishment, so <clears throat> there's that. So, the five of the week committee has chosen Plagis the Wise to be the defensive player of the year this season, 38. Congratulations, and uh, we'll move on to our final two topics, which are seedings everywhere. A hectic 100-game sim just concluded. Then, and we'll move on. Uh, we'll start from the top. So, Arizona Wildcats and the Gonzaga Bulldogs are vying for position in their division. Bulldogs with 58 and 19. Arizona Wildcats with 59 and 17, uh, Bulldogs chasing by 1.5 games. Uh, who's gonna come out on top? The Bulldogs are looking near unbeatable currently, but uh, so are the Arizona Wildcats. Who should take this? Okay. Not me. I feel like I'm too biased towards the Bulldogs to take this. I'm in the exact opposite camp. I think as a whole, the Wildcats are just a tad better um all season they've been the consensus best team and uh i just don't see that changing in the postseason especially because um the bulldogs they rely very heavily on mr x and he's already had a few games this season where he has been in foul trouble and just therefore if a playoff game goes bad um worst case scenario he falls out sometime third uh, there's two halves only sometime in the early second half and then that could be Gonzaga's season just like that yeah and the same applies for the rest of the season as well if we're talking about seeding because if there's one night where <clears throat> Mr. X is in foul trouble, has four fouls early in the second half. Uh, the Bulldogs might lack scoring. Well, they obviously can look to Mark Diarani and Plandoli, but uh, there's always the if and what, what's going to happen, if and how, what. Uh, that, yeah, this is a bad analogy. on one player for your offense usually doesn't work out in the postseason. Yes. I learned that. The hard way. First-hand experience here. Uh, I might also have the first-hand experience in a week. Uh, that's going to be very fun to follow. But uh, so, Hoosiers at 45 wins, Duke at 45 wins, Orange at 46 wins, but also an additional loss. Uh, the win percentage is 58.4 for Hoosiers and Duke and 58.2 for Orange. Um, the Blue Devils in 7th, uh, Orange at 8th in the seedings. Uh, Blue Devils, their last 5 games on the road. Hoosiers have a tougher schedule facing the Wildcats, as you, uh, Arizona Wildcats as you mentioned. Uh, Orange facing the Orange as well, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So there's going to be a, lots and lots of unpredictability there. Uh, 
uh, we can only hope that the Duke can snag you him. Mean, you... you said we can only hope that the Duke something. I don't want Duke to be good. I want the, I want the fifth. Oh, oh yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. Get the fifth. yeah, yeah, yeah. I I mean I mean it as um, how should I say it? We as the Duke Brotherhood, Duke Strong Nation. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, the Mountaineers will not win out all of their games. They have six to play, and even if Duke. I believe Duke are pretty much safe for home court with one more victory. The same might not be for the Syracuse Orange as they have had a bit of a flaky back end for the season. So uh, it's probable that the Duke Blue Devils face the West Virginia Mountaineers at home in March or then I believe it's the Oregon Ducks at home if we can just hold on to this front court positioning uh, home court positioning so of the bottom seedings you two aren't involved in this uh, the Fighting Irish are pretty much out of the race aren't they yep they are yeah sadly and, sadly yes and uh, the Hoosiers uh, already mentioned at the top and so it's currently Tar Heels in the final spot for the March Madness with 36 wins the Georgetown Hoyas trailing by half a game with a win in hand over the Tar Heels and then the Kentucky Wildcats trailing by a one whole game uh, who who would you like to see out of all these teams in March? Hoyas, Tar Heels, Cavaliers even, uh, then the Kentucky Wildcats. Mm, everyone but the Kentucky Wildcats. Yes. They'll have plenty of seasons where they'll be yes. in the playoffs coming soon. Yes. The spirit of danger golden lives on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, not all of them, uh, unfortunately, cannot make it. Uh, the Virginia Cavaliers uh, had cut over half of their starting lineup, uh, so they're probably in a free fall down the seeding. But uh, who do you have in mind, Robo? Who do you want in the 15 16 position to possibly upset the top seeds? To upset the top seeds. Well, to possibly upset. Um, I don't really like that many teams, <laughs> to be honest. It's the Bulldogs uh, and the I'll, I'll pick the North Carolina Tar Heels. All right. Uh, they had a strong showing last season in March. They, I believe they were in the national championship game, weren't they? So yeah, they were. So it, 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 I think it was them, yeah. So for them, uh, losing Damian Wade and Tyron Kings is obviously a blow to their expectations, but it would be sad to miss them in March this season. Uh, I don't know if the Tar Heels can really pose a threat against the Arizona Wildcats or the Gonzaga Bulldogs of the world, but it it should be an interesting matchup either way uh, which possible matchups are you looking forward the most or do you have a grasp on the possible seedings yet well i mean i'm looking forward to the arizona bulldogs game that's gonna happen right at the end one to five yeah, yeah. and then, like I mentioned, there's the Blue Devils versus Mountaineers possibility. Actually, a mm. very large possibility. Uh, there's not much of a rivalry there, but uh, the off-season podcast's probably gonna get spicy with some unnecessary with trash. trash talk. Yes. <laughs> and I mean, it's pretty bad when there's like one out of four of the podcast members you can't even trash talk them. 
they're not even in the trash talking discussion. They're so bad. Okay. Who is it? Cool. Thanks. Who's that? Ah, oh. uh, I see. I well, mean, three out of four of us made the playoffs. Well, okay, yeah. Then. He's trying his hardest. He's in the. <laughs> he's he's in Give the. Give me f- some time. <laughs> He's in the first year of the job. <laughs> like, <clears throat> robotastic is not just for a disclaimer. But uh, yeah, definitely that. And who would you, who are you most excited to face, possibly Robo, with the Indiana Hoosiers? Well, who would, who who do I think I would be able to beat, or who would I like to play? Well, it kind of. Let me just uh, simulate this and see an example of who you're gonna face. Oh, Duke won all five of their road games. Jesus Christ, 50 wins. Uh, <clears throat> oh, lucky. So, <laughs> hey, hey. So the Hoosiers are in this version facing the Oregon Ducks. I believe it's Hoosiers or Blue Devils facing. Jayhawks, Ducks, or the Mountaineers. It's any of that combination, really. So those are I mean, your possible first-round opponents. I'd like to play the Mountaineers, and I feel like we could win. Because mm-hmm. it'd, be, it'd be fun making fun of Danger. No. But I also like the Ducks, because I want, I want to beat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Taking know? down last season's champions is... Yeah, even that's though, just a cool thing to do. Yeah, even though they're weak and... A bit. It's still a big feather in your cap. Uh, any postseason win in your first year in the job is a feather in the cap. But that would Defense be. Defense wins championships, boys. I believe uh, that's enough trash talk for our threshold here. So we'll move on to our <clears throat> very unimaginative outros this time. It's Friday simulation will more than likely presented by either me or a cryptic pancake more than likely me because i already committed to it verbally so friday friday yes yeah yeah and on sunday there will be no sim in preparation for the postseason get your point as in everyone it's march madness coming next week uh obviously for the uh, Virginia Cavaliers, Fighting Irish, Washington Huskies, Yukon Huskies, Cincinnati Bearcats, Wichita State Shockers, Michigan State Spartans. No need to get your point pass in. You won't be making the March Madness. Uh, all right, oh. with that, it has been five of the week. You have been listening to five of the week. Uh, it has been I at Okocha Star and my wonderful, delightful co-host uh, Robotastic. Yes, bye. Bye. <laughs> and uh, a, a huge fan favorite, uh, the most active member of the century, a cryptic pancake. Oh, cool. I'm the most accurate member of the century now. Nice. Um, well, have a good week, everyone. I'll probably be back next week. All right. And before I forget, this is now... You might see on your screens, it says five of the week, da- at Danger Golding and at Uh But uh, a cryptic pancake has now surpassed. Uh, no, I'm tied. Tied? Next week I surpass him. How much is it now? How many times is it now? Um, I don't know. I'd have eight to count. To I eight. think ten each, something like that. Oh yeah, because you obviously shared some, yes. Yes, 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 <laughs> that's it. So... Until this gets on too boring. It probably is already too boring. That's all for five of the week this week. Yeah. Well, hope. I don't to... know how many people actually watched at the end of the podcast. Yeah, probably no one, but it's good, good, <laughs> good. It's good, good. Uh, how do you say? Top, top, top content. Keep an ear out for Mr. Splashman's new soccer league. Blah, 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 blah. Bye.